Today's interview is with Tim Gray. He's known as the UK's leading biohacker, and I would definitely agree with that. He is the founder of the Health Optimization Summit in London. Um, if you don't follow Tim on Instagram, I highly recommend it. His handle on Instagram is at Tim Biohacker. He puts out so much amazing information. Um, I'm so aligned with Tim. I love that, you know, before we the show, we talked and he's like, biohacking is really just about mimicking nature. And I'm like, that's what I say. So I, I love it. He has so much good info. He's going into that in the episode today. He's talking about his top 10 areas of biohacking that he recommends. He has a very grounded approach to it. It's not like he's going to tell you to go like have a three hour long morning routine with every biohacking tool that you need to go spend money on. In fact, he's very much the opposite. He's like, how can we do free biohacks? How can we bring more health into our bodies without having to spend a ton of money? So I really appreciate that about him. He's explaining what biohacking is, what it isn't. Um, and yeah, he just has such a great approach and so much good information. We'll link everything he talks about in the show, in the show notes. So make sure you check those. Um, and yeah, he is just amazing. He has a background in psychology as well. So he brings that into his biohacking approach and just a quick heads up. If you want to get out to London at the end of May in 2022, that's when health optimization summit is. We'll put a link to that, um, in the show notes, you can get tickets, see who the speakers are exhibitors and all of that. Um, and he also has supplements now, and I was kind of geeking out on his supplement stacks. So, um, that's at shop.healthoptimization.com. And again, it's all with an S because he is from England. So, um, yeah, we'll go ahead and get into it. Here is Tim gray. All right. So if you guys are watching on YouTube, Tim is like, you already can see he's a biohacker. He's got his blue light blockers on and guys, I'm, I'm very excited to dive in. Cause Tim really like your information on biohacking is my favorite on all of the internet. I'm like, yes, please. Gosh, let's bring this back to practicality. Let's bring it to actual action steps. You know, there's a lot of like foggy stuff and biohacking and some people might be turned off to biohacking because maybe they got exposure to it. And they're like, dude, what is all this crazy stuff you guys are doing. It sounds so overwhelming. What is the point? Is it really going to make that big of an impact in my life? And so I guess the, I think the best place to start in this interview is what is biohacking? And you mentioned before, like you like to talk about what it is and what it isn't. So can you mm -hmm. speak on that? Yeah, sure. So, I mean, I always start with what it isn't because as with any trend, the media likes to grab a hold of it and get more clicks and get more readership. Yeah. Um, so they often uh, muddy the waters. So what it isn't is chip implants, transhumanism, um, and it's not uh, genus <laughs> like, like the Netflix show, um, making a cat glow in the dark. That's an absolutely fundamental point because when most people say, oh, biohacking, oh, that's when you've got like a cyborg arm. It's <laughs> not. It's not. Biohacking in its purest form is um, basically optimizing your health. And yeah. that is having a systems thinking approach to optimizing your health. So instead of saying, I'm just going to go and try a gut cleanse or throwing some probiotics down my throat, it's actually let's measure to see what bacteria I need and supplement accordingly. Um, yeah. so it's, it's very measured. And um, I guess quantifying health changes, such, yeah. as, such as optimizing your sleep by tracking it, adding blue blockers, three hours before bed, seeing your deep sleep or REM sleep improve, knowing right. that's going to kick on to the next thing. So that's really what biohacking is. And that can be, um, for instance, yoga can be integrated into biohacking as a biohacker because you, you need to stretch, you need to get lymphatic flow or whatever. Right. But as a yogi, yoga isn't a biohack. So it's the right. system thinking approach and bolting these things onto the mindset that makes you biohacking. I love that point. And I, I, I love the... I think it's so exciting that we now don't have to just guess, you know, like uh, before it was like, Oh, vitamin C is good for you. Take vitamin C. Zinc is good for you. Take that. Oh, this is good for you. Just do it. And I'm like, for some people, you may not need to supplement zinc for some people that might be life-changing. Some people might need to supplement methylated folate for other mm -hmm. people. Like it's, they don't need it, you know? So it's, it's awesome to me. Like, and like you're saying, we can track our sleep cycles and see what's actually happening. Did this thing even make 
make a difference. I think it's so exciting. Um, can you speak a minute on, you know, being kind of overly dependent on the tracking and, you know, the, being almost manic. I'm sure you've seen that. Cause I do biohacking too in my coaching and I've seen, it's like, <gasps> like my or ring said, but it's like almost causes more stress. Can you yeah. speak on that? Yeah, of course. So before I do touch on that, I'd just like to say that biohacking is also perceived as expensive. Yeah. And it can be because every yeah. guru has got something to sell. You know, even myself, I have a course, I have some supplements and I have a summit. I'm not going to deny it, but I do what I love and I only share and do the things that add value to the world. But that does make it, everyone wants to commercialize it somehow. Yeah. So it's not just for rich kids. Like for instance, and this is the, the line we spoke about just before the podcast is that like everything that we do in biohacking is actually mimicking nature in some way. So if you have um, hyperbaric oxygen therapy, that is mimicking having proper breathing over the space of years that you may be chronically under breathing or over breathing yeah. dependent. Or you might have a deficiency in natural light. So therefore you need sad lighting in the morning or red light therapy for healing. You know, um, or you might need more antioxidants or um, PEMF or any of these things when in fact you just have a deficiency of standing on the ground and getting free electrons from grounding. So every single thing in biohacking basically is mimicking nature in some way. So for instance, you could say, well, blue blocking glasses cost you 200 bucks. Okay, well, actually, if you stop playing on your phones, use candlelight at home and just chill out for the last three hours before bed, you don't need 200 buck glasses. So it's not for rich kids. It's just the perception of it. So I just wanted to touch yeah. on that before I went into it. Um, now, <clears throat> in terms of uh, us biohackers, we're generally um, type A, <laughs> high achievers generally, um, yeah usually overstressed or very stressed, manic, um, have worked super hard, super many hours because they're so driven and dopamine dominant, you know, in, yeah. in uh, Overman tests, they're nearly always dopamine do dominant yeah. and always chasing shiny toys or the next goal and never being happy. Now with that obviously comes tracking everything and being almost obsessive about every calorie or the macros your sleep score waking up in the morning and feeling disheartened when you haven't got a 95 sleep score now one thing that i learned and i think is from my health journey personally which is and i've got a 20-year psychology background actually mm -hmm. and um so i'm very conscious of my behavior and others and i try to optimize it and we're all human but the point is, is it makes me very uh focused on behavior so when i first got ill and i at one point when i was you know like 32 i hadn't had anything other than a hangover in my life before that was basically it I hadn't experienced sickness i always thought sickness was a weakness that my staff had um, or an excuse for that they could have a day off of school but then when I got chronically ill I realized you know for instance uh, it'd been going on for a few months and then I'd have like a, a twitch or something in my neck or I'd feel a bump in my arm and I'd be super stressed thinking oh no this is something bad this is going to cause me to be even more ill blah 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 and so you're hyper alert and you're in this hyper stressed state which actually you know increasing cortisol you know your body's thinking it's running away from a threat so digestion shuts down all these different processes like down regulate because it thinks that you're supposed to be running away from an animal and in fact you're not so um I think that when you get into the space or when you start optimizing your health, you are hyper alert with everything. And after a period of time, you know that that twitch comes and goes once a month yeah. or, you know, um, or you have a new bump or something or other. And in fact, you're just imagining it's been there your whole life. And after a while, you then start to calm a bit. But yeah. I think there's a point where a lot of biohackers um, do track their sleep or do take a new supplement and they think it's the most amazing thing. Um, or they're really super stressed when they wake up in the morning and they let their data own them opposed to them owning the data. So the fail safe for me for my aura now is actually wake up, assess myself, check in with myself. Yeah. I give myself a score based on subjective feeling and say, what do I actually feel? Like how I know what time I went to bed. I know how I feel right now. I give myself an 85. And then for instance, if I then look at my ring and it says yeah. 72, I don't go, no, I go, actually what I feel is this. Whereas the common thing is people will look at it and they go, oh, I've only got a 62 sleep score. That's it. I feel horrendous. And then yeah. not, not, 
getting on with their day. So it is a dangerous area, but I think the longer that you're in it and the better the support group you have of people around you, the easier it actually becomes to detach from that. Yeah. And it's kind of that same principle you talk about letting the day own you versus you owning the day. It's like not letting the technology and the biofeedback own you and start to change your own thoughts and beliefs about what's happening inside of you. You own it. You decided to buy that you are checking, but you like you, I always say to my clients, I'm like, your intuition trumps everything, everything, every test you do every, you know, somebody tells you not to eat that, but your body's craving it. And every time you eat it, you feel amazing. I trust that. I trust that over any, any piece of biofeedback test, whatever, if you're feeling amazing and you're craving it, go for it. You know, that's, that's kind of how I see it. And I agree with you. I, um, I wore whoop for a couple of years and then I wore the aura for many years and, you know, used to be an affiliate with aura and all of that. And many of my clients do have aura rings. Um, and it is very helpful in the beginning. I don't currently wear an aura ring, um, because over so many years, of tracking that I'm the same boat as you. I'm like, I feel it now. I just, I'm, I'm intuitive, but it was nice to have that at first because I did see like mm-hmm. symptoms of overtraining. I definitely will tend to overtrain versus undertrain. <laughs> right. And I'm like, okay, I see it. My, my score is going down and I'm, you know, I'm not, I'm losing my appetite. I'm like more stressed out of my mind. I'm not sleeping as well. Got it. You know? So it was very helpful tool in the beginning. So I, I love your approach on that. It's just like, let's, let's check it out, see what's happening, see what this biofeedback can give us, but then let's bring it back in, rein it in and like tap into our higher selves here. And like, how do I feel? And just using it as feedback and not owning us. (laughs) So, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I completely, I completely agree with the checking in like the um, subjective or your intuition. I think that that it can be a double-edged sword, I think, because if I think you need to have been a biohacker or have tracked things to then yeah. trust your intuition. And I think, right. I think it's actually Malcolm Gladwell's blink, the book that talks about it is in like, you know, the 10,000 hours. And it's yeah. also uh, balanced by Matthew Syed, which is an amazing book, by the way, you, you should really read that. Balance. Uh, yeah. Um, balance. Balance. Okay. Um, and uh, it, I'll give you a very quick example of why this is highly relevant. Um, and the algorithm that works in the back of my mind with it <laughs> is that um, they say that, um, you know, um, Mozart was a, a genius, a child genius. Uh, well, actually, you know, from, from almost birth, I think it was from a year or something or other, he'd been practicing over and over and over and over and over again behind the scenes where people hadn't seen it until he came out and was this amazing musician um or um the guy that wrote the book actually was the one of the world's best table tennis players and how the world's best table tennis players just happened to come from the same town in reading just outside of london is because that they had a table tennis center where they all played around the clock all day getting the hours in but then the point is is then knowing when to let go let go and trust your intuition once you have become an but if you just trust your intuition beforehand it's uncalibrated so you know and I think that's why you hear often hear a story about for instance someone that just went for a checkup and then they've got cancer you know and they didn't know you know they their intuition wasn't refined or fine-tuned but then there's other people that had been optimizing their health they know what to look for they know when to let go and you know and, and then they trust their intuition so I think right right I think and my brother's actually gone down exactly the same route. He said to me two days ago, he said, wow, I haven't seen an aura ring for ages. He said, because I stopped wearing mine because I now trust myself, which is, which is awesome. You know, I think after three years of wearing one, it's, you know, you've got enough data to be able to go. Yeah. You've got this. And I know I should wear my blue blockers. And I know that if I eat after 7 p.m., I don't yeah. sleep. And I know if I drink alcohol, my heart rate goes up 12 extra beats in a, a minute. Right, right. Yeah, it's like it, it does help you become more in tune with yourself because you've seen those patterns over and over and over and you've measured them. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's I love that point. It's kind of like enhancing your, your body awareness, helping you do that because otherwise you know, it's just like anybody, like you, people with food intolerances per se, like they're like, I never even realized until I started tracking what I was eating that every time I eat that mm. I get bloated and feel like I, I didn't even realize I didn't even make the connection, you know? So it's like that tracking really helps us make those kind of connections. Um, I, 
the, the feedback, yeah. yeah, sorry, it's just it's feedback, isn't it? And if you hit a tennis ball against the wall time and time and time and time again, you're going to refine that until you can hit yeah. that exact spot every time. So it's feedback. Yeah. It's like driving your car with your eyes closed. You're not going to know. You're going to bump into stuff. But the feedback from your eyes tells you where to steer. And yeah. uh, having that data is your eyes on where to steer. And then, yeah. you know, actually you can let go and you can knock the tennis ball up against the wall without having your eyes open even because your your, your um, motor neuron system it, like, it is firing. It knows how to do it. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I love that point. And I want to because I, I love your content, Tim, like everything you put out, I'm like, gosh, that's good. Yes. Good. Good job. Like summing it up. Your infographics are all amazing. And so I wanted to get into some of the nitty gritty with you, if that's okay. And this comes from your health optimization program, your course, the fundamentals of biohacking. Um, and I was wondering, I, I guess we can let you go. You have 10 different areas you cover. I don't know if we can get through all 10. Let's see how we do, but let's maybe start with the order of operation that you're like, people got to know this, um, you know, in terms of value. I mean, I'll just keep it really basic. I won't drill into any of them particularly, but um, I think the fundamentals are the fundamentals. It's like um, one of the things that actually sparked me for, to do the course, um, other than people asking me where to start all the time, was someone messaged me and said, Tim, my girlfriend's got a problem with her gut. Which peptide should I use? <laughs> and my answer was, what does she eat? Exactly. <laughs> um, you know, tell me some background. So she done anything? He said, well, she's vegan. Um, she's not done. She doesn't take digestive enzymes. She doesn't do this, that, the other, blah, blah, blah. I was like, so why do you want peptides? You know, and so it kind of made me think, Yeah. people just don't have the awareness. So the course right. that I, I put together, um, and these are the these are the ten things basically. It is starts with timing your day, so circadian and sleep optimization. It's not just sleep; it's about lining up your day to um, line up your sleep. So, for instance, the time you wake, what you do when you wake, when you hydrate, uh, when you should be grounding each day, the timing, when you shouldn't exercise later than. Um, so that you're actually winding down in the evening when yeah. your last meal should be, so your blood glucose is low when you sleep. So you're actually repairing. Um, so that's that's day one. Day two is um, optimizing can I, your hygiene. Oh, can yeah, I okay. inter interrupt you real quick? I, <laughs> I just I want to hit on this and like just emphasize that because anybody who hasn't ever really optimized their circadian rhythm, I'm telling you, you've got to try this. Like at least for like I don't know two weeks, even two weeks, hopefully longer, but for two weeks commit to optimizing your circadian rhythm. So you, you might be working out at night right now. You're like, I'm going to get up freaking early. This is going to suck. I'm going to make some shifts and I'm going to try this. And I'm telling you, like, our, I was just telling a client this yesterday. I'm like, I know this sounds insulting. I don't know why it sounds insulting because we all like dogs, but our bodies are like dogs. They are trainable and they literally will release chemicals in the order that they're used to. It's like, Oh, it's starting to be workout time. I better start releasing adrenaline and getting, getting you up and, and, and Oh, it's sleepy time. I better start releasing all those chemicals. It's time for bed. It's just like, we're like big babies or dogs. You know, your dog like knows what time you're going to feed it. It's like coming up to that time. They're like wagging their tail, waiting for it. And we, our bodies are the same way. So I love that you start with this because when your hormones and your chemicals are working in your favor, all this other stuff that you're about to talk about helps more. It gets easier because your body's like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm in flow. I'm, I'm ready to go. Let's go, baby. So I love that you started with that. Yeah, it's funny. I mean, the mo most basic one, I think in, in all of this that she is, is really interesting because um, if people say oh, I wake with sunrise, except for when I'm in a hotel and it's blacked out. Well, it's funny that, isn't it? Because your, your circadian clock is working. It's just the, the blue light is waking you up. And yet you're using a blue device late at night, which is keeping you up later. So in fact, your sleeping window is shorter, which means that your body is not having time to repair and therefore you age quicker. Um, and it's like the, the simple test is if you have blackout blinds, lose them for a day and see what time you wake up and then make sure that you have at least eight hours before that time every day. That's a simple way if you're doing it without tracking with an aura. And if you haven't got that right, nothing else is really going to have massive impact because I'll give you an example of um, eating like after sunset or there or thereabouts is crazy because 
as per Dr. Sachin Panda's work in the Circadian Code book, mm-hmm. um, the study on rodents, which was um, feeding two sets of rodents um, the same amount of food, but one in a, an eight, a six to eight hour window and one could eat all day, every day, same amount of food. And yet the ones that ate in a six to eight hour window lost weight and the ones that ate in a 24 hour window uh, became obese. Now, what they found was that there's actually a gene that downregulates after sunset, which means that we produce up to 50 times less insulin after sunset, meaning that our blood sugar is higher through the night. So we're, yeah. our organs are working at full speed, where our blood sugar is higher, which means we're then obviously storing it as fat opposed to use, uh, using it when we're moving around. So yeah. that the point is, is that we actually can lose weight just by eating the same amount of food. So even crappy food, this was done with, but in a smaller window. Obviously for women, as you know, if you do it in a too small a window, then actually it messes up hormones and it starts causing all sorts of problems and women start losing their periods and things like that because my belief is that our ancestors, the females had um, source a store of food in the cave when they were feeding the children throughout the day and the, the, husband, the, the men would be out hunting and only be able to carry, carry a small amount of food, therefore fasting in a, a smaller window. So it, it really is absolutely important that these things are done right. And within circadian, um, it covers day three, which is sun and light. So it's about the timing of your light, blocking junk light after sunset um, and making sure you're getting enough natural light. Um, obviously, we're like we're basically complicated plants. And actually, I did a post on Instagram a while ago saying we're 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 plants, but complicated because we have emotions. Um, <laughs> you know, essentially, yeah. we are the same. We need good water. We need minerals, set not from the soil. We need sunlight. Um, yeah. And you know, so that that ties into that. So, for instance, waking with natural light, trying to see sunrise if you can, or getting as much natural light in the morning. I mean, sad lighting is very popular, very very popular, and it's mainstream. Um, having blue light in the morning for seasonal affective disorder, for depression and whatnot, um, and it's widely accepted. And yet, people aren't getting enough natural light, and you know, a lot of them aren't actually getting enough, even of the fake, the fake light. So. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so that was day three. Day two is actually about hydration and making sure that you're hydrating correctly. And that's not just drinking tap water. It's either filtering it, having reverse osmosis or whatever, and then making sure that you're remineralizing it. Um, and there's a hundred different, you know, uh, uh, mineral supplements out there. I just like simple Celtic salt because it has 78, 82 trace elements and minerals in it and helps yeah. you rehydrate. That obviously helps bring you out of a stress state as well because the body can relax it's got minerals um and um helps your body oxygenate it helps your electrical system it helps the adrenals and 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 everything so that also helps you know um with your circadian rhythm significantly as well anyway i'll I'll flip forward um grounding grounding in nature is the next one um as we're electrical creatures and the medical system only really ever remembers that when we're chronically uh, sorry we're uh, emergency case of dehydration or if our heart stops and they use the the paddles on us um but we are electrical creatures that need uh, an, an electrical balance the rest of our lives as well and so grounding um connecting with the ground standing on grass in water on soil actually gives us a flow of free electrons which helps rebalance our electrical system which actually reduces inflammation it helps our blood flow better and you can see this under live microscope analysis Um, and um, in thermography as well seeing inflammation levels come down so it's about how to incorporate grounding into your day and what time and how much time a day and also being in nature um, for the cleaner air um, for the ions uh, which also helps with uh, inflammation and whatnot and also um, you know we talk about psychology color psychology a lot but also we do actually relax when we see green and color psychology is a thing because when you're in nature generally you're more relaxed opposed to in a city air city air when there's much yeah. more positive ions and there's the buzz which isn't so good for us um, and gray concrete isn't necessarily as calming and yeah. obviously nature does so it covers that and the science and the studies behind that the next Amazing. one breathing in oxygen uh breathing in oxygen obviously most of us are chronic over breathers because we breathe through our mouth mouth as you know 
um, and how to incorporate breath work into your day and help, how to help you sleep with it as well. Um, I go into exercise and, and movement, making sure that you're keeping moving throughout the day, using a standing desk, how to build a standing desk or nice. what to incorporate into it. And that includes having a, a, a grounding mouse mat. So you're grounded throughout the day. As oh, well. nice. Love um, that. There's, there's a few things like that. And then I guess really the, just to really touch quickly is the nutrition mindset. And it's not, you can eat this, you can't eat that because I think that that's a toxic mindset to be in. Yeah. It's more understanding nutrients, um, anti-nutrients, um, macronutrients, understanding calories and kind of debunking, but not completely, you know, like appreciating that calories do have a place, but it's more about the nutrients and um, how to tailor your food based on how your body operates. Um, yeah. so, and then and my favorite one of all, which has probably been the biggest part of my whole journey actually is oral and dental optimization. And that's biological dentistry mindset, which is, you know, the, it's the assumption that, or the belief that looking into someone's mouth can actually tell you so much more about their health than you realize. So if they have cavities, if they have cavitations, if they've had loads of fillings, you know, if you think evolutionary speaking, our ancestors, if someone had all their teeth had fallen out, they couldn't chew meat or eat, you know, they wouldn't be around very long. And yet yeah. many of us these days have teeth uh, missing or don't have many teeth left at all um, or have so many different uh, oral health issues. Um, you look in there, you can tell a lot. And Chinese medicine does this, but biological dentistry actually looks at deficiencies of why your teeth aren't as good as they should be. And then looking at hidden infections in the jawbone, um, making sure that metals are removed, making sure that you don't have titanium implants because that causes disturbance in your body. Um, and then making sure it's replaced with ceramic or zirconia implants instead, um, which people with chronic sinus issues, anyone listening to that, to this, um, that have had chronic sinus issues, you might find that you've got a root canal treated tooth in the upper jaw, um, which often cause that, or people that have migraines, for instance, often have metal implants or um, root canal treated teeth. Um, there's a documentary I recommend watching if you don't do the course, and it's called Root Cause, um, um, and it's all about biological dentistry. And um, one of the things that really stuck with me in it was that I think it's 98% of women that had breast cancer on one side had a root canal treated tooth on the same side. Wow. Now, the dental industry actually pushed back and got the documentary removed from Netflix because they don't believe in biological dentistry. They believe in fixing bites and filling cavities. And they don't believe that having root canal treated teeth, which is essentially a dead organ that's been filled with something and left in the body to rot, even though they say there's no bacteria, there is. And when they've been, um, what's the word, analyzed by biological dentists in labs, you can see that there's things like candida, um, and cytokine marks like interleukin-6 and things like that as a wow. result, jawbone for years. And then when it's gone, cleaned out, and a ceramic implant in there, lifelong migraines or neck problems or various wow. other health issues are gone. And the final thing I'd like to say on this actually is really important for so many people that struggle with candida, which seems everyone seems to bloom and have candida, <laughs> or have, is that most people focus straight on the gut. Yeah. The thing is, health starts in the mouth because if you have got a root canal treated tooth or a dodgy tooth or a cavitation, you can have candida in the mouth and that will filter down to the gut. And if right. you fix the gut first, you're always going to have to be fixing the gut because it's always going from the mouth. Wow. There's 10 times the bacteria in the oral cavity than there is in the back passage. Wow. So, Great point. Great uh, info. Yeah. So, so there's one thing that really is important to look at, and I, I go into extreme detail in that, referencing all of the right books, or all of the biological dentists, nice. even Dr. Klinghart works in there as well, uh, and the studies as well. And there's a great book on the subject by my dear friend, Dr. Dom Nitschwitz. Um, um, he's the world's leading biological dentist. He wrote a book called It's All in Your Mouth. And so if anyone has had areas in this, uh, issues with this, then I really, really, really recommend that book. Nice. Um, and then the final two things I'll touch on super quick because I realize I've been talking uh, shed load is um, community and relationships. Um, you know, they say that your vibe attracts your tribe. 
you know, and, um, you know, I think you should be genuine, authentic, and the people that resonate with you will stick around and the ones that don't will rattle off and be in their other groups. And I think, you know, you can have a very bad day, but be with someone amazing and all of a sudden your day is great. Yeah. Or imagine if you only put your energy towards the people that are truly amazing, you know, you would really raise very quickly. So I think community and relationships are super, super, super important. And that is exactly why I built the conference the health optimization yeah. summit in the first place because i went to la i went to the bulletproof conference i loved it came back to london and then it was empty there was no one so i created the community for that reason nice. and, you know it's it's incredible you know you know what it's like i mean i think we're we're kind of instagram and friends and colleagues and things yeah. but it's so fun to see what everyone's up to and you know mm -hmm. the mindset you know you don't have to tread on eggshells you just you know you ha you hang with people that just get you and that's yeah. generally what the space is um and then the final one is your higher purpose and your why you know why do you do what you do you know, to quote simon sinek if you don't you know if if most people and it's almost like a first date question it's like mm, what do you do why do you do what you do what's your passion what's your purpose and most people go oh i don't know i've never thought of that mm -hmm. The thing is, if you haven't got that, what's going to be guiding you? What's going to be your guiding star? And I think for me, I, I ultimately, I'm mean, selfish. I want good health, <laughs> you know, yeah. really, and so that I can enjoy this life and this planet. But secondary to that is sharing what I learned along yeah. the way with people so that they can benefit from that too, because we use people as heuristics. You know, why do we go to a doctor? Well, because he's got this expertise to help us. We should do. Why do we go to a lawyer? Because they've learned law and it's a heuristic for us. We pay them, we trust them to do something better than we could without having to learn it. And it's the same, you know, with um, why I do what I do. I, I learn as much as I can. I share it with the world so that people don't have to drill into these topics themselves and can do a course for 10 days and walk away with the knowledge of, you know, 50 experts all in 10 days, you know, 30 years. And I, I feel like that's similar to what you do <laughs> in all yeah. honesty. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Well, I, this is, this is an amazing, amazing course, amazing list. I'm like, man, you, you nailed it. This is such good information. And I want to, I guess we'll start with this one. I want to hit on the why first that the, it, it, you know, what's really amazing is, um, so some of the goal setting I do in my coaching is, you know, what, why, when, and how, like when we set a goal and it's amazing, like, first of all, that people don't even know what they want. It, it, and in terms of health, often I hear, you know, what do you want? I want to feel better. I'm like, well, what does that mean? You know, like, what, what do you see? What do you, what do you imagine? Like, let's, let's get some visualization. Let's get something tangible on that. Like what's an actual spot where you can imagine yourself where you're feeling better. Like, what is that? You know? And then the, why I find what you're talking about here, like why we're doing things. It's, it's astonishing how often we do not even know why we are doing the things that we're doing and that getting like a tangible, like why for what we're doing will is to me, the deal breaker on whether you accomplish things or not. If your why sucks, if it's like, I'm doing this because I got emotionally provoked on an Instagram post and Tim does that. So like, I just like, I don't know. I just thought it was cool. And like, I should do it. You're not going to do it. Your why sucks. Like you're not going to follow through. It's not going to be personal to you. Um, if your career, if your why is like, I don't know. I mean, like, shoot, this is what I can do and get paid for. Like, oh, your soul just dies. And when your soul dies like that and you become numb, your health fails. So I love that you included that in like a biohacking course, because if you're spiritual, if you're not lit up inside, if you're not empowered and you just like hate your job, you hate your life, you hate your relationships, you hate everything, like you will suffer physically completely. Like you're the lights will go out. Everything will go down. You're in adrenaline mode or depressed and you make worse food decisions. You can't sleep at night. You just become apathetic. And so I love that you put some of that at the end of like who was around you and what's happening inside of you. Um, I also wanted to hit on your eating at night thing, because mm -hmm. I just wanted to highlight this because I've, I thought this is something I've been saying forever. I'm like, listen guys, like, if you just want to make this thing easy, just like, don't eat after dinner. If you don't eat after dinner, like everything will start to slowly shift into the way that you, you want it to go in terms of, especially people who are trying to lose weight. And mm -hmm. I, I, I think it can't be emphasized enough that if you're eating a bunch of food right before bed, not only like you said, is your blood sugar going up and all that, but like 
that lack of sleep quality that you're getting because you just put your body into go mode is preventing heal mode. So like when our guts are digesting all of our food, they're like, crap, man, we're, we got a lot of work to do. They just ate all this stuff. We got to send this here, send that here. Okay. Filter through that. And now you lost repair mode. And so mm-hmm. I think that is like I, such a golden nugget. I'm glad that you emphasize that with, with the circadian rhythm study, because I, you know, so many of us are doing this. So many people are eating really late at night. And it's like, I, I truly believe that not only will your health suffer like in the interim, but I, I, I believe it can eventually take years off of your life because you're missing out on that repair, that deep sleep, um, that repair process. So love that point so much. Well, two points I just want to touch on here is number one is that people that do eat late in the evening and like there's some people say oh, I don't drink up don't drink any water or tea after 8 p.m because I'll wake up to pee in the night you know well actually, are you waking up to pee in the night because if you look at your circadian rhythm and in, actually in the course I've got a, a day clock where you plot um, what you do and when and it's funny because most people say oh, I wake up at two to three in the morning to go to toilet that's because your body thinks it is bedtime at two or three in the morning. It thinks it's uh, in taking a pee before bed, but in fact, you've actually been in bed because the, the, mm. the day is so messed up. You've eaten three hours later than you should have done. You're wake, you're going toilet three hours later than you should have done. Wow. <laughs> it literally shifted everything around. Um, and then they wake up early because of sunrise or because they have to get on with their day. So not only have they woken up in the night to go pee, they've gone to bed late and they've woken up early and therefore they're absolutely ruining their chances of a high performance and the other thing is is that um, not eating too late is important but on the flip side it's also really important to make sure you eat enough now I can speak firsthand on this I mean I did solid keto for 12 months absolute solid like military style I tell you Um, and while I felt mentally superior to most people I was ever near, near at some point. And I don't mean that in an egotistic No, way. I say the same thing. I felt like a superhuman. Like, I'm like, I see everything. <laughs> like you have a higher level of consciousness almost and your brain works yeah. in a different way. But um, I think um, it was very tough on my body. And while it fixed yeah. my gut, actually it gave my gut a year to repair um very well and it's the only thing that antimicrobials and anti-candida diet and all these things didn't do anything for my organic acid test but keto diet did but the point, point is is that you can end up eating too little especially if you do a shorter window and i i realized like i got down to 59 kilos and this is after keto this is a year after keto 59 kilos i'm now 72 and i'm wow. still considering myself to be thin um, but the point was, is I was eating about 12 to 1400 calories a day. One, because I wasn't tracking it. I just never think calories were enough because everyone says, oh, it's not about calories. It's not about calories. Mm-hmm. Kind of isn't it? Kind of isn't um, for me, in my opinion. And for my yeah. girls, I want to be 59 kilos. I want to be, you know, I want to have a bit of muscle and a bit of weight to me. So I wanted to be like 78. So um, I decided to make sure that I tracked my food to make sure I hit a certain amount of calories a day, but quality calories, like nutrient dense calories, not just any calories, you know, yeah. just drinking MCT oil just to get the calories in like some people do. Um, and so if you are fasting or intermittent fasting or not eating after sunset, make sure that you eat enough during the day for the amount of energy you're going to expend and make sure it's bloody good quality. And I think that's one thing that so many people forget to talk about. Um, yeah. Because, you know, some people don't have good microbiome and they don't put on weight easy myself. I mean, I can eat three to 4,000 calories a day of quality calories and not go over 72 kilos unless I really push my body or if I use Psalms or something else to help me get a bit more anabolic. Um, not that I advocate any of that, but as a biohacker, it's fun to test. Yeah. Uh, there's other people that can eat a thousand calories and put on weight. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I love that you're pushing this because there, so often I feel like because we live in a world where weight gain is most people's 
concern and worry, there's this mentality that's been developed a, in, and it's like the less I eat, the better eating less mm -hmm. is winning. And I, it's, it's such a warped way of looking at food because we look at food as calories, as you're saying, like in that, in that mental construct, food is just calories. And the less of them I eat, the better for me, the more I fast, the more I intermittent fast, the better, but we're missing the point that food is actually nutrients. So mm -hmm. I always say it's about nutrient dense foods, not calorie, avoiding calorie dense processed foods and trying to get as many nutrient dense foods as you can into your body. Cause it's really just about nutrients. I, I have kids and I tell my kids, I'm like, I, I have them pretend that they built a robot, you know? And I'm like, well, what's it going to run on, you know? Mm -hmm. And like, that's us. It's like, we have these like biotechnical suits that we live in and they run on things. They mm -hmm. need fuel. And there's, they're very complex and lots of different types of fuel, lots of vitamins, minerals, fibers, all these things to help with that. So I mm -hmm. appreciate you pushing, like, like make sure you're also eating. Cause I real quick, I'll just add quickly when I was super keto and, you know, doing lots of extended fasting, 36 hour fast was like a normal thing I would do a couple of times a month. Um, you know, pretty extreme intermittent fasting. I even went through a phase of trying one meal a day. And while mm -hmm. I, I love the simplicity of it and it was kind of fun and cool. And I just could eat whatever I wanted in my little window and then be done for the day. It was very efficient. Um, I was getting excited. I actually lost like 15 pounds and I was like, this is kind of easy. Maybe I'll make an ebook about this. And I pulled back and I didn't because it was the only time in my life that I ever had an irregular cycle after mm -hmm. doing that for a couple months. And I was like, Nope. If I, cause I have, I, it takes a lot. My body is very resilient and it takes a lot. I, that's never happened. Even when I did a bikini competition that didn't happen and that was crazy. So I was like, okay. So I, I, it's like for women, especially to like pushing into this mentality of n giving your body nutrients, nourishing the body. And when we get in that mentality, it gets easy. You don't have to have this restrictive fast all the time, restrict, restrict, restrict. It's more about pushing those nutrients in the body. So I, I just, I appreciate your message on that no no it's i mean it, it, it is super important i mean i think the thing that gave me the realization was biohacking and i'll tell you why this is a really this is an overlap in different things in my journey but um i actually went for surgery in uh, to see dr dom actually for some dental surgery i had a sinus lift to have i had a ceramic implant to go in and various other things and what they do is they pull blood beforehand and spin it so you've got plasma rich fibrin yeah. Um, ready so that when they've taken out your wisdom tooth or teeth or whatever, they can then sew in or stitch in um, the, the plasma rich fibrin. Mm. Now, the funny thing is, is when I first had it done on the, the, the first week I got there, they spun the blood and the nurses brought it out and said, Oh, here they are. You know, you can see them in the tray. You know, they're about mm -hmm. this big. And um, they said, Yeah, they're, they're okay size. So it's good. So, anyway, I had the surgery, they did it. Anyway, I, unfortunately, for some reason, I, had, I got an infection. And then 10 days later, I had to go back in. Now, after surgery, Dom said to me, Tim, you're going to have to get yourself good aminos, um, branch chain and essential. Um, we're going to have to get you anabolic because you're not eating enough. You're fasting too much. You're catabolic, not anabolic. And your body is holding on for dear life. And I was like, no, no, no. I'm a biohacker. Mm. I know the shit. I know my body. And he's like, Tim, I'm telling you. We're gonna um, we're gonna just to start with add in some aminos and add in some plant based protein and uh, some probiotics. So that's the only thing I changed, FYI. And I did two aminos a day and one protein shake a day. Ten days later, I went in for my surgery again, and they spun the blood, and the membranes were like this big. Wow. And he went. The nurses came in and said, actually, we cannot believe the size difference. They're like two to three times the size bigger from the same amount of blood wow. showing that you're now anabolic. And I saw it in literally in front of me. And I was wow. just like, I was catabolic. And then Dom was like, no wonder you're not healing from these things. No wonder you're wow. always got something else to work on with your health. You're not anabolic. So from that day forward, um, I've had aminos every single day and I time them correctly. Um, actually, I brought one out <laughs> very recently. I brought out nice. a branch chain essential um, creatine, glutamine, Ooh. and taurine with magnesium um, uh, stack, five in one stack, which actually just launched about six weeks ago based on the formula that I had after surgery. So it's super clean, it's uh, fermented source. 
amino is oh. not the, kind of the source like a lot of them out there are. Um, Real quickly, yeah. where do people find your supplements? What's the website for that? Yeah shop.healthoptimization.com okay so that's optimization with an s because i'm british yes. and they're yes. awkward like that. <laughs> um, but um yeah so the point my point is is that fasting too much means you can be catabolic and your body actually gets sick from not having the nutrients it needs in place so fasting more doesn't equal healthier it doesn't regardless of what every guru says I had a very, you know, this is not as cool as your story with the, with the dentist, but I, my hair girl, she's like in her early twenties and she's been doing my hair for years and she follows me on Instagram and she's kind of up on up on like my little health journey. And it was, I think just a few months ago, she was like, she just said just in passing, she's like, Oh my gosh, your hair is so much healthier since you stopped doing all that fasting. <laughs> and I was like, huh interesting, you know? And so, yeah, like it's, 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 it's an important thing because I think we can get too carried away. Like you said, these like type a winning personalities, like I'm the best biohacker. I'm the best faster. Like I don't do extended day fast anymore at all. Like I will not do a three day fast because I've done it twice and it did not go well for me after optimizing everything. My body just, I wasn't, I even stopped producing ketones. I was trying to bring down adrenaline with salt. Like I was just like, you know what? I don't need to do this. There's no badge of honor for being this extended day faster. My body is obviously not responding well to it. So it's all good, you know? So I, I, I appreciate, um, the message of making sure that we're also giving our body enough nutrients in this whole quest for, you know, yeah, we want to be able to go into AMPK or the, like the fasted state, the regenerative state, but we also want to be in that anabolic building state too. So we can build our bodies out of something. <laughs> so, yeah. I think like, like you say about keto, I think it's, it's a tool. It's a tool in our tool yeah. belt. Yep. It, you go in, you use it, and then you put it back in the tool belt for another time. Amen. And it's the same with fasting, same with keto, same with paleo, same with even plant-based. It's the yep. same with carnivore, you know, yep. and everyone says, oh, well, that works for me. You're wrong. It's like, yeah, you're right. It works for you. Everyone's individualized. And in fact, yep. you know, a lot of people say, and media say, like, where do you think biohacking is going? And I say, hyper-personalized. And this yeah. is where healthcare will be going. And I think, you know, there's in the future, I would like to think that vegans won't argue with carnivore, except for ethical reasons. I appreciate yeah, right. But for health, I think veganism is crazy unless it's for a reset diet. For carnivore, I think it's amazing for some people, but they're kicking the can down the road because they've got to fix something else, which is why they can't handle some plants. You know, yeah. I think keto is amazing for performance and getting rid of a whole load of issues, all of these things. So, and I do think that it will be a stacked approach of what works for what person or that person in time based on what they need, hyper-personalized. That's where I think it will be. Amen. I mean, that's, that's why I use it in my coaching. Cause I'm like, I can just get you results so much faster. If we can look at your DNA and what's possible and then match that to what we're seeing in your blood and then get your, your minerals tested and like, start to see these patterns. It's like, ah, it's like this awesome puzzle piece. And then you're not just like, here, take this because it's good for you. It's just, we're past that, you know? And I, I, I completely agree. It's, it's, personalize. And it, it actually really gets rid of all this dogma of like, what is the right way? I mean, it, the more advanced you get in health, I think the more you learn, it's not about the right way or the wrong way. It's what's needed. What's the goal? What's the, where are you at currently? And where are you trying to go? That's a different path for, for everybody, you know? So yeah, I really appreciate that. Um, want to drop a, drop a announcement, of, but I'm, I'm going to put this in the intro too, but health optimization summit guys, this is in, it's in London, correct? In, yes. in, in London. Okay. So in London at the end of May, 2022, we'll put the link in the show notes. Um, thank you for creating it. I got to get out there because like you said, I think we met briefly at paleo effects the first time, like on, <laughs> just yeah. after the event. And yeah, those events like have been where I found my community, you know, like I now have friends that in Austin and Washington and California and all over. And they're like my best friends because I met them at events like this. So if you're looking for your tribe of people, like put yourself where your tribe is, if this is your jam and you love this stuff, go to health optimization summit, you know, go to some of these other events that are similar. So dropping a mm -hmm. note on that. And then again, and guys, we'll put a link in the show notes for the health op optimization program and his um, health optimization supplements and then follow Tim on Instagram because his stuff is really good. It's at Tim biohacker. So just dropping a note on that. Any, any last words, Tim, before we close up? Yeah, I just like the summit. I think we bring the best from America and Europe to London and, nice. um, in Europe, we're not used to that. 
and the Americans aren't used to Europe. So it's a really good combo, bringing the best yeah. from everywhere. Um, it really is amazing. And it's only keynotes. It's like the best of the best. Nice. Cannot wait. Cannot wait. That thank you for thank you for all of the amazing info that you put out and for creating these events and supplement that supplement stack sounds awesome, by the way. I'm gonna check out your supplements. Um, but yeah, thank you, thank you for all you do, and thank you for coming and sharing all of that with us today. And um, yeah, I guess we'll go ahead and wrap up here. Thanks again, yeah. Tim. Thanks for having me.